I'm just making up some bronze bolts here to attach the lead keel to the boat. So today, that's what we're going to do on the Art of Boat Building. I just attach the deadwood with a construction screw, mainly just to hold it in place temporarily. Uh, so I had mentioned in the last episode that I had done a little fairing of the lead keel and getting all of the pieces to fit together nicely. So the next step is to make the stern post. And the stern post would be a piece of white oak that will be attached here to the deadwood. Now it's made out of white oak because it needs to have the gudgeons for the rudder that will be attached to it. So the first thing that I need to do is to determine what the width that that board needs to be. So I have a straight piece of wood here that I can put on here like that across the transom because it should be right in line with that. And we'll measure this. We have like two and three sixteenths and we have two and three sixteenths there also. Now I have this piece of white oak but it only measures one and three quarters so I'm basically you know, about three eighths a little more than three eighths uh, shy of it. So this will be the stern post and it will fit right in here like so. So what I need to do is to laminate uh, an extra piece of white oak to this uh, in order to make it uh, the big enough stock. Fits pretty good and flush. Angle looks good. So now I'm going to mark down here 
where the lead keel meets it. Now that I've got the stern post all shaped and fitted, I need to drill a couple of holes in order to attach it to the boat. Uh, one hole comes down around 17 or 18 inches and it goes into the uh, stern post at a 90 degree angle from the outside. Now the other one, as it shows in the plans, comes up here about five or six inches down and it is 90 degrees to the stern knee. So it will come out of the boat here at an angle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-drill a hole here on the drill press so that I have a nice square 90 degree hole in order to get started in drilling that long hole through the uh, dead wood. <laughs> Well, it seems like it never fails. Despite all of my careful calculations, I still ended up coming out right at a frame station. So my solution was to use an oscillating saw and a hand chisel to uh, clean that up. Uh, it's not a problem in that that um, needed to be on a bevel anyway in order for the washer and the nut to fit on there. So at any rate, problem solved. Now that I've got all of my bolts and parts made up here. I can now uh, disassemble the dead wood and everything and get some sealant on there and uh, bolt it together for its final fit. So in order to attach the uh, dead wood to the keel permanently, I'm going to use uh, 3M's um, 5200 uh, sealant, marine sealant. In the olden days, they would have used white lead. And since the dead wood should never have to be taken off of the boat, this adhesive sealant is will work just fine. 
Now, some might wonder why I didn't use epoxy. And the thing is that the sealant will fill in the gaps much better than what epoxy would have. And certainly easier to apply. I'm just cleaning up some of the squeeze out before that sealant completely cures. Be a little easier to clean it now. All right, that should do it for getting the stern post and the dead wood attached to the boat. Now all of these bolts will get cut off and they'll be plugged with fairing compound. And in addition, um, all of the, the dead wood and the keel and the, and the stern post will all be fared together with some fairing compound so it'll look like one complete unit before the boat goes in the water. So now we can turn our attention to attaching the lead keel. So the first thing I need to do in order to attach the ballast keel to the boat is to drill holes through the wooden keel and through the lead keel. Now this haven has eight bolts that hold the ballast keel onto the boat, two of which go through the wooden keel, the dead wood, and the ballast keel here at the aft end of the boat. And there's one then up here between station seven and eight that go through just the wooden keel and the ballast keel. So that leaves the remaining five bolts. One goes through station 10, and two go through station 12 at the starboard and port side, and two go through station 14 at the starboard and port side. Now, these five bolts all go through the floor timbers shown here. So I had pre-drilled those floor timbers in order to put a temporary bolt in there in order to hold the floor timber to the wooden keel before I got the planking on there. So that's what I'll do first is I'll drill these five holes starting with this hole here at station 10. So I had practiced drilling 
in some lead ingots before I started doing this just to see how the lead would respond. And what I learned was it's better to use a smaller pilot hole through the lead first and then follow it with the finish size hole that you want. The other thing I learned was that a slow RPM and clearing the chips often is good. If you use a high RPM and you don't clear the chips, then it can heat up and actually seize in that lead because the lead will melt at a fairly low temperature. The other thing I learned was a little bit of cutting oil helps lubricate that. So we'll get started here. After I get a hole started, I put just a little bit of oil in there. Well, now that we've got all of the holes drilled through the uh, wooden keel and into the ballast keel, we can now lift the boat off here and move the ballast keel out of the way so that we can fin finish drilling those holes and countersink them. Now that I've got it flipped over, I'm filling in these holes with some uh, hardwood dowel rod. And to do that, so that the, when I use my spade bit, it has a center to work in. And punch the center so it's a good place to start. Now that I've got the boat situated back on top of the ballast keel, I can now measure the uh, length of the ballast keel bolts. So I'm going to take this small dowel rod and place it in the hole here. And I put a piece of tape on the bottom so that it wouldn't go all the way through. And then I'm going to take a small piece of tape and put it on the top like so. And then that'll let me know how uh, long that bolt needs to be. Well, 
Well, at the beginning of the video, you saw me using this small thread cutter. The, these dies are really nice for small jobs. They're really slow going. And one of the other problems with them is it's very difficult to get the threads started straight. So I was thinking to myself, I sure wish that I had one of those rigid bolt cutters or thread cutters for bolts that I had used when I was out in Massachusetts working on Arabella with Steve. So on Thanksgiving morning, I was lamenting the fact that I had not thought ahead to have purchased one. So I got on Facebook Marketplace, and lo and behold, about a couple of miles from my house, a fellow was selling one. And <clears throat> it's exactly the same thing. Uh, in fact, it came with two of them. One was for threading bolts, and one was for threading pipe. So it came with about five dies, and um, the uh, fellow that sold it, it had been his father's who had been a dairy farmer. And as you know in the past that I'm quite a fan of the heritage of tools, and I love using tools that had a little, have a little story behind them, uh, as opposed to brand new ones. Certainly brand new ones are okay if you can't, if you don't have another option. So anyway, uh, let me show you how this works. So once you get the material in the vise secure, then you simply put the ratchet on here. Make sure that the arrow is going the right direction. And I like to sort of push on it and get it started by hand a little bit. And once it starts to bite, then I'll put a little bit of uh, cutting oil in there. And it's just a matter of ratcheting along. And once you get the desired length of threads on there, turn the arrow going the other way, and then back it off. I usually take a little wire brush and clean them up a little bit. So that's bolt number four. So I've got uh, four more to go. Well, that's it. I've got all of the hardware ready in order to attach the ballast keel to the boat. Now, some of you might have noticed that I had cut a slot in the top of one of the rods when I was attaching the stern post. I did that so that I was able to operate from one side and I didn't need an extra pair of hands on the bottom side. So that's not the case with the ballast keel. I really need an extra pair of hands. So I'm probably going to need to phone a friend. So we'll have to put that off until next episode when we actually attach the ballast keel to the boat. So thanks for watching and I'll see you the next time on the Art of Boat Building.